Uh, my name is Alexandra Bormina, this is Tatiana Tritikova, and here is a big group, <laughs> a research group, um, with whom we uh, conducted the research Creative City Transforming the Public Space and uh, prepared this um, talk. Uh, in the frameworks of this talk, we're going to discuss the opportunities and limitations of social network analysis in creative industries research uh, from the beginning of uh, the 2000s. Um, there has been a big discussion of the emergence of creative industries um, in Russia and in St. Petersburg. And uh, there are two basic uh, perspectives of, uh, um, of such discussion. Uh, the policy papers discussion, uh, which uh, developed uh, mainly in Great Britain and Australia, and um, the academic discussion. Um, and uh, it's interesting that in both of these discussions, uh, music, fine arts, uh, performative arts, uh, fashion, publishing, uh, institutions, uh, etc., etc., are all classified to be uh, creative institutions. Uh, the phenomenon of creativity is often connected with social networks. Uh, and, for example, if you uh, want to find some articles on creative industries in Google Scholar or wherever, you would inevitably face uh, many, many uh, articles which uh, use uh, social network metaphors and we're going to discuss uh, how creative uh, industries are studied with the help of social network analysis methods, um, what are the advantages and some maybe drawbacks of this uh, methodology and then we'll uh, speak about our project, our attempts of using SNA methods uh, to studying the creative industries of St. Petersburg and um, we'll tell you how we were trying to fight against some problems that inevitably occurred. Mm. Uh, as you know from, from Milgram's experiments, uh, the, world, uh, the whole world is, consists of social networks um, which, are, um, which uh, uh, form the huge social network. And uh, as all the social groups and agents um, have different uh, social status, uh, the information or resources they circulate uh, from one social, um, social group to other. And uh, for example, if we look at this picture, uh, we see how the product or some resource um, flows from the book follow worker to the intellectual worker and so on. And, um, but this concept is not, um, um, cannot be applied to, uh, to the research of uh, some uh, in, uh, empirical uh, populations because uh, these researches um, require some uh, bounded, um, bo uh, bounded sample. And um, now we will have a look at some researches uh, where the scholars tried to um, create these artificial boundaries uh, and which drawbacks these attempts will do. <laughs> Uh, okay, so one of the most uh, cited uh, network researchers, Ronald Bird, uh, uh, states that good ideas appear uh, on structural holes. On this picture, we can see that uh, the structural holes are these spaces between the groups, um, the groups uh, of the field. And um, he, uh, his main idea is that in the position of a broker who spans these structural holes uh, is the most advantageous one, like uh, the Roberts on the picture uh, is the most advant advantageous one uh, because uh, a broker can uh, get uh, can uh, get some information uh, first uh, he also uh, accumulates information and translates it between groups um, in his uh, article bird uh, gives us the example of uh, Paul such uh, such uh, who was mm, very successful and uh, actually uh, uh, he uh, he connected uh, the previously unconnected uh, groups of uh, institutions such as uh, museums, universities, and finance, uh, which finally led to the emergence of a uh, museum of modern art of New York. Uh, so uh, this is a good example of how uh, of how good and how successful a person on the structural whole can be. Uh, so, um, Bert his, himself, in order to uh, discover the most advantageous uh, positions in the network structure, uh, uses the data of the res of a big research of uh, on the, uh, of a huge American electronic company, and uh, um, and the borders of uh, his research are quite natural because these are the borders uh, of this company. 
Uh, so in order to get information he, uh, and data, he asked uh, the employees of uh, this company to um, enumerate uh, those, uh, the other employees of this company with whom they are connected. Uh, so um, the problem that uh, he faced was that, um, uh, that uh, people uh, could name only, uh, only the others from the list uh, of uh, uh, the employees of this company. And uh, uh, he didn't uh, consider the exogenous uh, factors such as the other uh, companies, the finances, or the probably some connections with universities, which can uh, make the position of the actor um, advantages in this field. Uh, thus, the goal of his research, uh, which was to see which uh, positions in the field are advantages, um, wasn't uh, reached entirely fully uh, because he just missed a lot of other factors. Mm -hmm. Uh, another research conducted uh, in the field of cultural production was uh, that one um, made by uh, Katani and Firiani, and they examined the um, film industry, uh, an example of uh, Hollywood film industry. And um, based on a core periphery structure of network, they tried to uh, look at how this um, system works and, as they put it, to unveil the uh, social re relation, uh, relational um, fabric of the industry. Uh, so um, in this network, it's an ideal type of network, and uh, in the center you can see the key figures uh, of the network which are entrenched in, the, um, in these positions, and uh, the connections between the, um, between the agents are dense and very strong, and um, uh, these uh, positions are um, favorable because um, if you have an idea, you will get the recognition of your colleagues, and uh, these ideas uh, will actually work. Uh, but uh, this does not always guarantee that um, these ideas will be fresh and new and creative. Um, and uh, there are some other agents which are on the periphery of the network uh, that can uh, generate some successful ideas too because they, um, they get some fresh ideas from, the, um, from uh, the part of the network which is not shown on this one, it is some, uh, somewhere uh, behind this uh, boundary, and uh, this is um, because the Catania and Firiani put these um, constraints on their uh, sample, they uh, look at only the core crews of the uh, film makers, uh, only on, uh, only on uh, composers, directors, and um, filmmakers. Uh, they do not take into account the um, media and critics who would influence somehow in the field and uh, probably become the key uh, members of this network and on some other businesses which could also affect somehow on the success. Okay, uh, one more research of American uh, creative field uh, was conducted by Pacey Foster and his colleagues uh, investigating the structural organization of Boston musical sphere and uh, the gatekeeper roles. Uh, they found out that uh, the gatekeepers who work with uh, and who work for the clubs which present uh, original music are connected and uh, have well have different uh, structural positions uh, than the gatekeepers who work for cover clubs which present uh, which are the platforms for performance of the uh, cover bands uh, even though uh, Pacey Foster and colleagues uh, had another type of sample than Bird, for example, had. Uh, they face uh, this problem again that uh, they didn't. Uh, they considered um, while making this network, they considered uh, only the um, gatekeepers and uh, the clubs, uh, whereas, uh, for example, the musicians with whom uh, the gatekeepers of the cover clubs are very important. Uh, so the results of their work is again limited because they don't consider the, um, the factors that are out of their sample and out of the boundaries of their sample. Mm -hmm. uh, however, the work is really uh, very important for us because we um, adopt their methodology in order to make a list of uh, the clubs and uh, of the clubs they were going to investigate, uh, they, they tried to find an expert who would provide them with this list and they uh, found one professional newspaper which had this list, so they just took it and 
um, the respondents were the clubs that, and the gatekeepers that were in that list of the newspaper. This method is pretty good for constructing the sample in the field that doesn't have any natural boundaries. And uh, now we're going to talk about the creative industries in St. Petersburg. And um, this kind of new institutions appeared in the, in the early 2000s. And uh, new institutions um, became a part of institutional uh, of cultural scene in the city. And uh, why we uh, and uh, they are interesting for us for several reasons. Uh, first, because um, this is a um, global tendency of appearance of these institutions, and uh, there are some um, characteristics which um, which are interesting uh, only in case of St. Petersburg. For example, uh, uh, these art institutions do not have a state support in the city, and uh, there is no um, there is. There is an absence of tradition of charity committees in the city, so these uh, institutions are not supported. Um, f uh, second, uh, as uh, we know from the literature on sociology of arts, uh, each um, cultural product uh, uh, contribute to the social inequality. So uh, we uh, we were interested if uh, the product um, made by this institution uh, support the inequality in the society, and uh, if yes, then which uh, uh, what are the resources which help to, uh, these institutions to do so? And uh, the questions we are going to answer during our speech is which institutional patterns do these new institutions adapt? How do they form the ego networks? And what kinds of, act of agents are included in, the, in these networks? How do, they, uh, how do they interact with the old institutions and do they look for recognition, legitimacy and support of the old institutions if they need some? Uh, what should we add is that uh, the uh, population that we are observing is not uh, stable yet because from the beginning of our research uh, three institutions in this field died out uh, in St. Petersburg and two more appeared so it, ju it just uh, reshapes all the time. Uh, that is why uh, the procedure of uh, making the border of our sample is very important. So how we did we do this? On the first step of our research, during the uh, first year of our research, uh, we tried to use the snowball sample, so we came into the field from three different um, sites, and uh, we asked our respondents to give us to name some other people who they consider to be important in this field, and we came to these people and we conducted interviews with them, and so on. And uh, we were waiting until and people would start uh, naming the same institutions and the same people that we already have in the network so that the sample would be saturated. However, this didn't happen. They called uh, the new ones all the time uh, so that um, we just couldn't find the borders of the sample. Uh, however, uh, what is very important uh, is that even though we came to the field from three different uh, from three different uh, sites, um, the network became um, com uh, a single component, so uh, all the institutions were somehow connected. So we don't have the isolates in this um, picture. Uh, this means that th the field of creative industries in St. Petersburg exists, really. And uh, the second important idea that we got is that uh, most of the agents uh, in this field are not the art institutions. Uh, we have some arti artistic communities, we have even researchers, we have some media sources, etc. in this picture. So this means that uh, our respondents don't uh, consider only art institutions uh, as, the, uh, as the parts of the uh, creative industries of St. Petersburg. Uh, and uh, what, did, what uh, methodology are we using now? Uh, we decided to use an artificial boundary approach. Uh, we adapted Foster's methodology and, and we were trying to find some um, experts that would provide us with this list of uh, institutions we would be investigating. Uh, so uh, we found 10 media sources that you can see on the slide uh, that all present uh, certain lifestyles and uh, we, kept, uh, we conducted uh, a four-month monitoring of these uh, web, uh, websites, of these uh, media sources, fixing all the uh, event announcements uh, that uh, they were presenting and all the institutions which held uh, these events. So by the end of this four-month monitoring we had uh, 292 institutions fixed uh, but it was too big to conduct uh, research so we decided to make the sample smaller and uh, we used only three, 34 uh, most frequently named uh, institutions. They got into the sample 
Uh, we conducted 40 interviews with the representatives of which, uh, and uh, we should say that the guide of our uh, inter of our research uh, contained a big network guide. Uh, during the interviews, we asked our respondents um, the um, the name generator questions. So we just asked them to make small maps of the contexts in creative industries in St. Petersburg. Uh, we got all these uh, pictures of these all these networks and uh, mm, tried to analyze them. We had three types of matrices, these ego networks that we collected during the interviews, then uh, the one big uh, the, the big one, uh, which uh, just contains all the uh, 40 uh, ego networks. And finally, we uh, cut off uh, the, not the extra, we, from this picture, uh, from this uh, matrix, we cut off all the institutions that didn't come into the sample, so it was a small uh, network of 34 points. Uh, we also uh, provided, uh, we also conducted a power sorting uh, procedure, about which we will tell you later, but it was one of the methods of the research. Uh, so our sample uh, consists of uh, the institutions that you can see on the top and what is important here uh, that we have the institutions uh, the traditional institutions and uh, which uh, follow the traditional goals and uh, have the traditional types of activities that ch that are listed um, on the left on the in the top part like uh, collection research and uh, so on and uh, and these are institutions like the Hermitage Ru Russian Museum and uh, institutions like this and uh, we also have uh, the, we would call them polyfunctional institutions that uh, contain bookstores, uh, workshop, that have workshops, parties, hostels, uh, mostly commercial types of activities. Um, and these institutions are located uh, in the right part. We can see that uh, the amount of points on, on the right part, on the pink, pink part, uh, is very big. So they have lots of activities. That is why we call them polyfunctional. And here is, the, uh, here is the United Network of Ego Networks of our respondents. And uh, as you can see, and what is significant for us, is that um, the pink notes are art institutions and the gray is any other institutions uh, they named. And it's interesting that um, uh, this network is mostly consists of uh, the gray notes, uh, which are not connected to art itself. And uh, it somehow proves our first um, outcomes from our pre previous stages of research. Uh, um, and uh, now we look at what are those gray nodes. Um, yeah, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, there is a really complex network, which is, consists of um, art institutions, media sources, some food spots and uh, universities, and some committees or so foundations, uh, institutes, and consulates. Um, uh, what is necessary to say is that we wouldn't get such network if we used just the classical social network analysis procedures, uh, such as um, uh, giving our respondents the lists of people they can choose from or to give, their na uh, give them the names. Uh, so this uh, network uh, would consist of, of only some art institutions and we wouldn't see the whole picture. Um, and if we have a closer look to, um, uh, to separate institutions, for example, Mori on the top, um, uh, it, uh, this institution on the top, uh, it um, connected to uh, some uh, uh, not, uh, not art connected uh, notes, uh, to some uh, media sources, but not uh, just to art institutions. But if we compare it to general stuff here and there, um, and it is not <coughs> institutions, it, it uh, mostly connected to art institutions uh, than those on the other. Half of the network. Mm -hmm. Now, what is also important in this picture, uh, you can see uh, the pink nodes uh, representing media sources, and all the others are just the others. Um, so, uh, what is uh, what can we? Well, our uh, during the interviews, everybody said said that contacts with uh, media sources are very important. Uh, so, we tried to uh, show this on the map and uh, to present you two important ideas that we uh, got. First of all. Um, there are really many uh, media sources on this in this picture, and there are uh, some media sources that are in the center uh, that many uh, of the of our respondents share and uh, um, try to find their support and help. 
and uh, there are some institutions, some media sources that are located around our institutions, and the uh, which have only cont contacts with only uh, one art center, for example. Uh, it is interesting that most of these um, pendant uh, media sources are professional, like some spe specific. Uh, theater journals or cinema magazines and something like this. This is one idea. The second idea is that uh, the uh, media sources in the circle, uh, they are like bridging the two parts of our uh, net, the top one and the, um, the upper one and, and the lower one. And uh, as you will hear later, um, they connect to different groups. Uh, the top one is like uh, the combination of mainly the new institutions, and the lower one is the uh, contains many old and traditional probably uh, institutions mainly. Uh, so it's interesting that uh, the media sources bridge these two groups. Mm -hmm. uh, other important agents for the network are uh, committees, consulates, institutes, and others, which can provide the institutions with. Uh, financial investments and some uh, uh, abilities to co uh, cooperate with uh, foreign institutions if these institutions want to want to have these cooperative ties. Uh, and uh, it's important that um, in the center of the network we can see the Committee for Culture of St. Petersburg, um, Committee of Culture. Um, in, uh, and as you can see, uh, both uh, old and new institutions are eager to uh, get the recognition from this institution and to um, get support from this one, even if the institution are non-state institutions from the upper part. Um, they still want to, um, they still lack of um, resources which they uh, can get from other, whether personal investments or um, or from the tickets they sell to the public and the profit from this. Mm, yeah. So the state organization is still important for both old and new institutions. Mm -hmm. um, after that, we uh, cut off all the extra nodes from the network and left only those which are in the sample. Mm, and uh, we uh, conducted a new uh, Newman grouping uh, procedure. And um, it gave us uh, several groups, uh, which we are going to describe and look at closer. Um, on the left, you can see a polyfunctional institutions, uh, which we mentioned mentioned before. Um, they are new institutions, and they offer their public uh, a wide range of activities uh, and so on. And they are not stable. Um, and another interesting group here is the yellow one, uh, which we called combinatorial um, institutions. And why they are combinatorial? Because they um, uh, they are situated between these new institutions and old traditional ones. And um, to um, get stable positions here, they borrow the um, resources for, uh, of the old institutions, uh, such as state support, uh, but they try to get to the public of these new institutions. Um, uh, so they borrow their um, m uh, methods, methods and tactics um, and uh, widen their range of activities they offer to the public. Mm. Yes. Uh, so uh, this uh, this picture somehow reminds us the previous one. This is German human uh, grouping um, grouping procedure. We did the German German human grouping procedure, and uh, here probably it's not well seen, but uh, we can again see that uh, the group on the right, the yellow one, uh, it includes the the platforms that we call polytech polyfunctional. Um, Spaces like Moria, Taiga, which um, which lack uh, the state and business support, and uh, on the right we can on the left we can see uh, the mainly old and some new institutions which already uh, have this support, and um, which uh, are legitimated by the institutions that are in the same sector. Uh, however, we have this blue purple group of institutions, as Tanya said, the combinatorial ones, which uh, try to. Um, can, uh, which are traditional ones, mainly like Alexandrinsky Theatre or the Resourceful Bukvayet, but who try to uh, somehow connect a bit with the right group, uh, which is very interesting for us. We can prove it here, uh, because this is the same picture, but uh, red color means that uh, the network uh, in, inside is uh, dense, uh, that the density is high, and the blue color means that there is just no density. Uh, so we see that um, 
uh, there are two like um, like v very dense uh, parts of this network. Uh, with the hut of Mo uh, one hut is Moria, and the other hut are all those traditional institutions. And we see that um, there is almost no connection between these two groups, uh, which means that it's really hard to get the resources. Uh, to, to that, it, that it's really hard for these uh, polyfunctional uh, uh, institutions to get the resources uh, from uh, and legitimation from the left group. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to talk a little bit about what we did next. It was pile sorting technique. Um, um, what did it look like? Uh, we borrowed this method from uh, Pace Foster's um, research on music industry. Um, we offered our respondents uh, 34 cards with, uh, with the names of institutions written down on them from the sample and asked them to classify them somehow. We didn't, uh, didn't uh, restrict their actions, just gave them the cards and asked to classify it. Um, and after that we did, um, did a table per each uh, grouping and um, did a multidimensional scaling procedure. And it looks looked like this. Um, yes, so uh, there is a map of how these all the institutions uh, which were written down in the cards um, are situated in this um, chart. Maybe yeah. Uh, so uh, on the right, we can see the uh, the institutions which are which are probably easy to classify. Those are traditional institutions such as uh, theaters. Uh, cinema theaters, literary museums, historical museums, and fine art museums. And um, our respondents uh, used this uh, conservative academic classification, uh, such as museums are for exposing pieces of art, uh, theaters are from, uh, for performative uh, forms of art, and so on. And um, as uh, they are situated uh, too close to each other, and uh, we can see these groups, uh, it was easy for them to classify these uh, traditional institutions. But if we look at the left part of the chart, we can see that it um, that the um, that the connection and the space between these in institutions, which are new and not stable and are difficult to classify, uh, uh, they um, they uh, do not have these uh, visible groupings, uh, and we can assume that uh, this. Uh, conservative classification does not allow our respondents to um, to put these institutions into different groups. And if we look at the previous photos, um, we can see that um, all the um, old institutions are regularly put into the same uh, group, and uh, the new ones, such as uh, Etage or Galeria Bari, uh, they are often put into different uh, piles, and um, uh, or our respondents didn't know them at all. Mm. Yes, and uh, so we can say that uh, the status of new or old uh, institution is rather strong because uh, when the respondents classify new institutions, uh, they do not regard the content and do not regard what these institutions offer their publics. Uh, public, uh, because for example, there is a modern theater, Skarahot. Uh, and um, they do not put it. Uh, they do not usually put it with another theaters because it's a new one, and they do not uh, see it as the classical theater. And uh, but uh, they put it closer to the uh, these polyfunctional institutions, which are not connected to these theaters at all. Um, and uh, if they see the old ones, um, they do not consider the types of activities they provide too, uh, because uh, all the combinatorial institutions which we uh, saw before, um, they are uh, in this part of the chart and uh, the public does not understand that um, these institutions try to um, somehow get to the public of the new ones. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, we uh, made a picture of all these functions of our institutions here as well. And uh, this picture is uh, pretty in interesting because uh, it again uh, shows us that people think tra in traditional categories and uh, that, uh, for example, uh, for example, on the right, uh, um, we can see the group of theaters, uh, which are connected to the type of activities <laughs> performance. Uh, there so are some arrows here. You can yes. see it, but um, <laughs> so this is the theater group, which is quite traditional. Uh, on the on the bottom, uh, here is a group of uh, cinema theaters, which are connected to the type of activity in movies, and which is quite easy to. Uh, show. 
Um, then the, over there we can see the old and traditional museums, among which are the Hermitage, St. Petersburg History Museum. Um, they, they all share two types of activities, the collection, because they all have the collection and the research. So it's really important for them, uh, but it's not important for any other institutions in our sample. We have um, a big group of, well, it's pretty bigger. Um, yes, uh, we have a group of uh, the galleries, which um, sometimes have collections, sometimes not, but they all sell, m most of them sell arts. Uh, so uh, they are also connected by the types of activities. And the multifunctional, group of multifunctional uh, institutions that are again together uh, because they share and they provide the public with really lots of types of activities such as bookstores, bars, restaurants, hostels, etc, uh, etc, et lots of types of activities. Mm -hmm. And between these groups we, we have, uh, for example, um, Lindog, Kuryokin, Bukvayets, um, Karahod. This is a group which is uh, a bit close to cinemas, a bit close to the polyfunctional uh, spaces, to theatres, which have uh, different types of contents. So they are not in these uh, very groups. Um, but, well, what is the main um, result of this picture is that uh, here we can see that uh, they are classified traditionally according to the types of activities they uh, have. And uh, to sum up, we'd like to show you the picture that you already saw and to, uh, to again draw your attention to this division into the uh, new institutions uh, which are poly mo mostly polyfunctional and the old and supported uh, ones. And we'd like to uh, tell you about the, ex uh, to draw your attention to the exclusion of the new institutions. Uh, you saw that they, uh, they are not connected, as you saw on the density uh, graphs for example, they are not connected to the old institutions. Uh, they don't have resources, this is another type of exclusion. And um, they don't have, um, yes, they don't have uh, support from the government and from mm, all the other uh, institutions. Moreover, uh, when they are classified, they make a certain group. Um, when they, for example, during the procedure of uh, pile sorting, uh, we can, uh, they are almost always classified as the bad institutions. They don't, that don't have art, uh, real art. They do, they do a lot of things, and they are often criticized a lot. Uh, so this, these are the three types of exclusion that uh, new institutions face. And, and the other important um, result that we have is that even though we were trying to, we paid really a, lo a lot of attention on sampling uh, our, or the sampling of our research, uh, we, d we cannot go behind the borders and we cannot, um, concede uh, the role of all the institutions, uh, so we face again the same problem as Bert and uh, Catania and Foster did. Uh, they just uh, couldn't go far be, uh, behind the border and uh, see what else can influence the positions of our institutions in the field. So uh, this is, I think, the end of our presentation. Thank you. Great.